the oil market absolutely imploded this week. Um, I'm going to play a little clip for you here. This is an explainer about what happened. This is from Channel 4 News. But I, I'll say before I show you, I didn't know that it could go into negative territory. But it went into negative territory. In other words, they had to pay to unload the oil. It's like they would pay you to take it. <laughs> That's unfathomable. But anyway, let's see exactly how this came about and then we'll discuss. About the price of oil is a gauge of economic health. Well, we know that globally economic health has been decimated by the coronavirus pandemic. Demand has really fallen off a cliff and so too with it, the amount of oil, the amount of energy that's needed to fuel the world's factories, the supply chains that carry all our goods all around the world, that power our businesses, that too has tumbled. The problem is the major oil producing nations continue to churn out millions of barrels of the stuff, even though demand was clearly falling. They didn't react to that. That has led to a glut. And whenever you have a glut of anything, demand and, and demand is falling then prices also tumble. And that is what is happening here, making matters worse. If you recall, a couple of weeks back, there was a spat between Russia and Saudi Arabia, two of the biggest producers. Neither side would give in, and both sides ended up producing even more oil. Then last week, President Trump, in fact, rarely to his credit, did manage to step in and produce um, a deal, managed to get Russia and all the um, other major oil producing nations to agree to cut production, including the US, because don't forget, the US has also become a major oil producer too. But the problem is those cuts, millions of barrels a day, have not yet kicked in. And what you've got now is worries that the amount of storage for all this oil that's sloshing around the system is imminently going to uh, run out, particularly here in the US. That has caused this major price crash today to levels below zero. So effectively, you will have producers begging buyers. In fact, Really, in negative price territory, they will have to pay buyers to take the oil off their hands. This is an unprecedented situation. Oil prices always suffer during economic crises. They always tumble. Never before have they fallen this low. Never before have they fallen into negative territory. And that really underscores, Cathy, the extent of the crisis that we are in here. And again, I say this all the time and don't mean to sound negative, but there are no signs really that the global economy is going to pull out of this crisis anytime soon. Terrifying. Terrifying. I would love to just on one day wake up and not see like a brand new giant scary issue arise. <laughs> I'm not, it's been happening every single day. The oil market totally imploding one day. We're going to get to another story later on in the show of Trump, you know, tweeting absurd threats at Iran now, say, saying, I give permission to our, to our Navy to shoot at the Iranian ships if they get too close, something along those lines. Like, every day it's something new, and it's like, oh my God, can we just have, let's get a little bit of breathe, let's get a little bit of calm, let's get, <laughs> just, we're on baby deer legs right now, let's, let's just get a little bit of stability, please, I would love that. Um, so... Here's what's happening. This is what happened in layman's terms. I mean, I think that was a pretty good explainer right there, but um, nobody's traveling because we're all home because we're all on lockdown. We're all on quarantine as a result of COVID-19. I mean, it is what it is. That's what's happening. So people are staying home as much as possible. Um, so one of the things that there's no demand for, it's oil. No demand for it. Now, we hadn't seen too much of a disturbance up until this point because we were still unloading all the oil and putting it in our strategic reserves. Now, Trump was paying, I think, $30 a barrel at the time. If he waited a little longer, he could have paid nothing to fill up our strategic reserves. But paying 30 bucks a barrel, we filled up all of our strategic reserves. So nobody's traveling. There's no demand for oil. It's still being produced, and now we have nowhere to even store it. Perfect storm. Perfect storm. 
perfect storm for the price to totally collapse. But again, what's amazing is it it did more than collapse. They literally would pay you to take the oil. <laughs> like what? So I mean, when you when you explain it simply like that, you actually understand, oh my god, this was unavoidable. Of course this was going to happen because there's no demand for oil, nobody's traveling and we filled up the strategic reserves. What did you expect was going to happen? It's almost like you look at it now and you're like, well, duh, obviously that was going to happen. But guys, this goes to show you, and this is just one example, one example of the unintended consequences of the chaos that has come about as a result of COVID-19. There's just one example. I'm sure there's a thousand other wild things that we're going to be dealing with. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, what the, what the heck else was going to happen? Of course this was going to happen. You got no demand for it. Supply is through the roof. <laughs> like, duh. So now a lot of people are in a lot of trouble because probably the only nation that can survive this and be okay is Saudi Arabia um, because their method of extraction is a lot cheaper. Meanwhile, all of the, you know, like the fracking that we do here, the oil industry here in the U.S. and in Canada, it costs a lot more money for us to extract it. So the costs that go into it, you're not earning that money back by continuing to do your job. So it's almost like immediately overnight, no longer a real viable business model. And that has the impact. So many jobs, so many people get hurt as a result of that. So naturally, now you have the government, you have Trump and everybody under the sun like, all right, so another bailout, dog. Money printer go brrrr. I mean, that's the thing all the time for all these industries. They're just like, another bailout, another bailout, another bailout, another bailout. But I don't see how a bailout could help at all when it's just simple supply and demand. What the hell is going to happen? Nobody's still, nobody's going to use the oil. Still, the strategic reserves are are full. So, there's just, it just makes no sense. It's no longer viable. <laughs> so, what do you do in a situation like that? Well, you know, the, the thing that makes sense to me is, sorry, but, you know, the investors and the top brass at these companies, the executives, the owners, you're asked out. You're donezo. You, there's nothing we could do for you. Sorry, bad investment. Uh, this is what happens in capitalism. Sometimes you go bust and these guys go bust. But what I would do for the workers is, honestly, I would pay them 100% of their salary up to a certain number. You can debate the number, whether it's 50 grand or 75 grand. Um, pay them 100% of their salary up to that line. And now really is the time. Now, AOC got into a lot of trouble for tweeting this because of how she phrased it. She almost like was celebrating the fact that this was happening. And so it comes across as, and she deleted the tweet because I think she realized that came across as like heartless and not like, I don't care about the people in those industries who just got, you know, their lives destroyed and the rug pulled out from underneath them. So she didn't, the way she worded it was terrible. But what we should do is pay the workers 100% of their income up to a certain point. We can, again, debate that line, 50 grand, 75 grand, whatever it may be. And right now is when you go all in on the technologies of the future and you do what is the equivalent of a new new deal for green and renewable technology to create those jobs of the future, whether it's, you know, wind, solar, geothermal, um, thorium. Now is the time to make the investments to, to create the jobs because literally the oil market imploded overnight. So... You can try to bail out the oil industry and try to drag out the inevitable, but with no signs that things are going to return to normal for the near future and even the you know moderate future, um, there's never been a better time to go all in on, on making this change, making this transition to green and renewable technology. And what's the old saying? Necessity is the father of invention. Well, now it's necessary because all these people lost their jobs and an industry imploded overnight. And a lot of people are going to feel a lot of pain. What we can do is structure it so that the only people who feel the pain are the billionaire investors and the owners of the company. And who cares to steal from the guy who was on CNBC who made this point very eloquently? Who cares? That's capitalism. That's the nature of it. If they go bust, they go bust. So don't bail out them. 
pay the workers what their wages are, and then make the transition to green renewable technology. And, um, you know, if some oil companies survive it, okay. But really, you should not be propping up and bailing out a dinosaur industry that has to go away at some point anyway. You can now start making the transition, again, while fully covering workers' incomes. We can make that transition. And it's necessary, it's important, but they're certainly not going to do that because we have a Republican administration in there. I don't even think a Democratic administration would do it. But um, what they're much more likely to do is the same thing they've done with all the other businesses that they've done this with, which is just throw money at them, throw giant bailouts at them with no strings attached. They'll squander the money. The people at the top of the company will take the money. They'll screw the workers. They'll lay people off anyway. And then in a couple of years, they're, they'll come back to the government hat in hand asking for another bailout. But this is really an unprecedented situation because there's no demand for oil. So they absolutely, they have no choice. They have to cut the supply and the production. They have to do it. So there's no demand for the oil and the strategic reserves are full. So of course something like this was going to happen. So a lot of changes are coming very, very quickly and very rapidly. And it has been brought about by uh, COVID-19, but what the hell else is on the horizon? Pfft. We're going to find out together, but there's going to be more.